word of a subject's been shot. Uh, Metro? We're not sure if he's in a car, on a car phone, or what. A call for help leads Michigan State troopers to the scene of a shooting. Halt! Put the gun down! A gun-toting psychopath forces the Wyoming Highway Patrol to make a life-or-death decision. He told me he'd give me 100 to 150 in cash. Watch and listen as a motorist tries to buy his way out of trouble. I can pick up a... What you're about to see is real. Stories from the files of the Highway Patrol and state police agencies from across America. The public's ability to summon emergency help is becoming easier thanks to new technology. Outside Detroit, Michigan, state police were alerted by a motorist with a cellular telephone. Metro to any 29 unit near uh, 96 in the boulevard. We got a call, 911 call, of a person shot. They're very incoherent, and we believe we've got them pinpointed down to the boulevard, Tillman area, off of 96 near the hospital. Okay, I know where that's at. I don't know if like on the ramp or just off the ramp, but just keep us advised. All right, we're uh, about two minutes ETA. Okay, we got a report of a subject's been shot. Uh, Metro? We're not sure if he's in a car, on a car phone, or what apparently is semi incoherent. Uh, Metro? Go ahead. We don't want to keep you firing going because we have an open line to that car right now. We're monitoring. Okay, good. You can let us know if we're close up. Okay, we're just getting off of the boulevard. We got a car here. Uh, yeah, stand by. I don't hear him anymore. Yeah, it does not hear the siren anymore. Okay, let me go around the block here to Tillman. Watch these cars here as we go by them. Okay, we backed up. Does she hear our siren anymore? I'm hearing them. They're getting closer. Hey, you're getting real close now. You're coming back into her range. There's a car back there behind you. Where? Okay, we'll go back around again. Adam, where's Where did you get off of? I got off at MLK Boulevard. Where is the car? Okay, we're heading now. Where's the car? Okay, we're heading now. 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 Right at the top of the service drive here. Okay, hey, we're going to send EMS. Got a pulse or anything? Not much. He's got the portable phone right in his hand there. Do we have scissors in the car anywhere? I'm going to cut this shirt off here. Sir? They know who it is. Sir? Sir, man, talk to them. My best friend. Okay, do you know what happened today? It's about it. After hours. Huh? It's about it. Come out with that camera. Yes, sir? Sir, talk to me. Talk to the crew. Come on. Hey, man, calm down. He said that they were at a party down across the street here on Warren. Okay, does he know who did the shooting? He says he don't, but he says a group of guys came by. Yes, they did. Apparently what happened is this gentleman was shot, uh, from what I gather, at a blind pig just a couple blocks from here. Uh, he ran down the street. He had a portable cellular phone in his hand. He called into our dispatch, 911. Uh, apparently he didn't know exactly where he was at, so our dispatch uh, gave us a general location. Uh, apparently he's got a bullet wound underneath his right armpit. Detroit Police is going to take the report and investigate it. We'll have to go down to Homicide Division do a report on what, uh, what we did at the scene here. But the matter is going to be turned over to Detroit Police now for disposition.
accidents involving motorcycles happen all too often. In Colorado, State Trooper Carol Nero was called to investigate one near Denver. Okay, we're out to uh, 63rd and Federal. Got an unknown of injury accident involving a motorcycle. Uh, don't know if there is any injuries yet until we get there. We haven't been advised. Okay, so we got one motorcycle involved. Don't know if we have any cars yet. Okay, uh, we got one party line in the roadway here. Definitely going to have injuries. Anybody see what happened? I was just, down there in the, in the little room over here. I was getting, okay. my, I was getting my van back there. I saw him okay. with the U-turn and back there at that intersection. Okay. And he looked back at me, and he just sped up real fast. And then when I was getting in the van, he, I heard the thing skid. Okay. He wasn't hit by anybody else no. or just the one? It looks like we just have the motorcycle involved right now. It's obviously going to be a serious injury accident at this point. Party saying this motorcycle went down, made a U-turn. Uh, looked back at him, and then the next thing we know, he wrecked. At this point, that's all I know until uh, we get a little more in-depth with the uh, in witnesses here. Got injuries here. Uh, looks like just the motorcycle involved. Uh, the paramedics are working on this party now. I'll advise on extent of injuries when I know. Hey, Torque, S53, did you copy? There are injuries. It's only a motorcycle involved. Unknown extent of injuries. Rescue's on scene. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he was drinking or not. I mean, I walked in the shop. He says, Art, let me take your bike for a ride. I said, okay. I was heading up to my house. And he says, okay. So I see the ambulance, and I said, oh, man. I guess I heard he was ripping down here like a wild man. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. When I first pulled up, there was no movement. The guy was laying face down on the ground. Um, blood just pouring out the side of his face. His face is pretty messed up. If he makes it, that'll be surprising. Uh, what time did he leave with the bike? Ten minutes ago. I'd say 15 from now, yeah. I mean, it was a split second. All of a sudden, I saw the ambulance, and I said, oh, no. He said, let me take your bike for a ride. I said, no problem. He's ridden it before. How is he, okay? Uh, i be honest with you, I couldn't tell you, sir. They took him to St. Anthony Central. Here's our first point of difficulty is up here with the gouge marks on the roads, which is where the... Motorcycle obviously went over on one side. Hey, you know what? I say the same thing he did, except for he pulled off. I mean, he could, I was standing in front of these trailers over here. Okay. And he took off from the back wheel. I mean, it was peeling out. Okay. All the way down. You he heard. took off out from these from, uh, mobile he, homes he, over he here? He came down the street. He turned around. Okay. And he was coming this way. Okay. Like he said, he looked back over at something that way. And then he got on it. The wheels were spinning. And he went. And then he heard the crash. And okay. that was it. How'd he crash? I don't know. What the hell? He took it for a ride. I stopped in the shop. He says, Art, let me ride your bike. I mean, that guy's the top rider in the state. What the hell? I don't know. Next, a speeding motorist crosses over state lines as Wyoming state troopers pick up the hot pursuit. Sometimes pursuits continue from one state into another. As soon as a suspect crosses that state line, the pursuit becomes the next state's responsibility. That's the situation faced by the Wyoming Highway Patrol near the Utah border. On a cold, crisp August morning on the flatlands of Utah, a state patrolman clocks a black Mercedes going 99 miles an hour in the oncoming lane. Turning around, the patrolman follows the car, and when it refuses to pull over, the pursuit begins. The officer, continuing the chase for several miles, crosses the border into Wyoming. It's then that the Utah officer requests a roadblock from the Wyoming State Highway Patrol. Hello, Charlie 12. I'm in pursuit of black Mercedes eastbound on Interstate 80 in excess of 100 miles an hour. Request a Wyoming set up a roadblock at milepost 31. Sam Roderick, the man being sought, has a history of minor traffic infractions. But this particular August day, he is incredibly despondent and wants to end it all. Troopers Linda Clerk and Jeff Barrett are using some downtime to catch up on the day's activities when they get the call. Charlie 12 is requesting roadblock in Wyoming. 
1069, myself on 124 will be in route. Copy, 1069. The suspect continues to evade the pursuing officers. Come on, what are you doing? Let's go, come on, let's go. Going. Officer, what's going on here? Nothing important. Let's come on. Just move your car. Just back come, and get out of here and go. Get going. Get out of here. Here they come. Jim, here they come. It's a car over here now. When he tries to get around the roadblock, he's forced over to the shoulder. The car stalls and he takes off on foot. Halt! Get out of the car! Freeze! Halt! Put the gun down! Go run his face. Halt! Put the gun down! Go ahead and shoot me! I don't want to live! Shoot me! Go gun I don't down want to now. die! Keep. He's gone under the bridge that way! He's gone that way! Halt! Put the gun down! Go ahead, shoot me! Oh god! The troopers continuing to pursue the man are joined by a Uinta County Deputy Sheriff. Leave me alone, I want to die! They lose sight of the suspect and they decide to wait for the sheriff to arrive before making their next move. We lost sight of him, Sheriff. He went over this ridge right over here. Don't know where he went from there. Is he still armed? Yeah, he still has his revolver. Oh. Oh. There he goes now. Okay, let's surround him. Make some cover. Okay, Sarge, I'm gonna take this side. The officer moves closer to the suspect as reinforcements arrive. A specially trained sharpshooter is brought in and is directed to a spot where he can overlook the suspect. Officer de Klerk decides to get close enough to try and reason with the man as the sharpshooter covers him. Put your gun down! Come on! Just put it down! Uh, look, we can talk. The suspect knows he's surrounded. De Klerk distracts him long enough for the sheriff to move in from behind him. Hey, hey, boy. Hey, hey, get in here. Come on, get away from me. I'll shoot myself, I swear. Come on, we haven't got time to put up with this all day. Get away from me. Get it down. Just the sheriff's presence agitates the suspect even more. And wanting to cool things down, he backs off. All right, just don't do anything. Don't do anything. I'm gonna put my gun down. Trooper de Klerk moves closer and continues to talk to the crazed man. I'm not gonna harm you. Just relax. We've been out here for two hours now. By this point, the suspect is nearly over the edge and appears anxious and self-destructive. It's getting really cold out here, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna sit down here with you, all right? Okay. Okay. What's your name? Sancho. It's very obvious you don't want to hurt any of us out here today. No, I want to die. When I walked up on him, I wasn't really fearful for my own life. And I know that may sound a little arrogant, but at the time, I never felt a threat. He, he basically uh, had the gun turned on himself, and maybe it was a little stupid, but... I just felt that I could go up and maybe talk to him, and we, maybe we could just end the situation a little bit. He said that he wanted to talk to a priest and that uh, to find out if it really was a sin to commit suicide. The priest was able to, to give him that answer, and I think that answer was real important coming from someone of the religious faith, and hopefully he can answer those questions that you were asking me. All right? Okay. So... I want to die. No, I don't think you really do. Father, I had to talk to you. It, does God consider it a sin to commit suicide? He did 
indicate to me that he did not want to live, that he wanted to die, and he wanted to die for reasons that, that I had no knowledge of. Um, he didn't really want to tell me a whole lot about his life at the time. Um, so I guess you do feel sorry for somebody like that because you, it's, it's, it's hard to feel compassion for someone that you, you, you don't know why they're hurting. Had he, had he been able to talk to me a little bit more and, and tell me more as, as to why he wanted to die, maybe it would be easier to understand. Son, why don't you give the officer your gun? He gave me the, the gun just a, just a couple moments after the priest had arrived and talked with him. He basically, you know, asked him if it was a sin to commit suicide, and the priest went in and told him, yes, it was a sin, had him look around, and, and, and maybe made him realize what life was all about. Tell me what happened in the accident. Next, a minor traffic accident reveals a whole lot more when Colorado State Troopers investigate. Involved in minor fender benders prefer to settle things between themselves. In Denver, Colorado, State Trooper Greg McComas discovered a rather interesting variation on the theme. What do we got? Well, I guess this guy here in the silver truck, uh came to the bar to pick up one of his friends. His friend came out, got in the truck, he pulled out in front of this lady and uh, she ran into him. That's her story. Okay. Uh, I think he might have been drinking, I'm not really sure. This one here? Yeah. In the blue? Yeah. He's okay. the driver of the truck. Do we have ID on him? Uh, he doesn't have any ID. Okay. He didn't have any paperwork at all. Just come on over here. Why don't you tell me what happened in the accident? I was, I was pulling out and she was pulling in and she had me right here. Okay. Right there. Five, three, three. She messed up. Um, I can't pick up. Uh, David, five, ten, four. I can't pick up. Uh, uh, Twenty-two, thirty. Ran down here and she was drunk. She was intoxicated. Called me up. Said I'm drunk. I don't want to drive home. I don't want to do nothing. You know, she come pick me up. I said, Yeah, sure. I'll come pick you up. Can't pick them up. Got in the truck. We're we're pulling out. She pulled it back in. And she hit me. Why don't you tell me what happened? Right, come on, man. I'm on my way down to my sister's house in Denver. I'm coming down the road here, and this guy just whips right out in front of me. Okay. And when I get out to talk to him, he tried to get me to not call any cops or anything. He told me he'd give me 100 to 150 in cash if I wouldn't call him, but he said he does not have his license. Okay. or insurance papers with him or anything. He tried to tell me, well, I got my witness in my truck. And I go, your witness is drunk. Look, don't step on my shoe. I want you to face right here. Face me right here. He offered her some money not to call the police. Okay. She didn't want to do that, so she went ahead and called the police. And we get here, and it looks like he's going to be a DUI. And she did the right thing. She probably would have been ripped off big time if she wouldn't have called. Eight, Britain. nine. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, L, K, M, O, N. Because he said he did not have his driver's license or insurance papers okay. with him. Now she's going to be able to get her vehicle fixed because we got the information that she needed to make her report. We'll take care of that for you. Okay. Turned out that the party was intoxicated and he has been arrested for DUI. So this is a situation where she was very smart and she did the right thing and called the police. And we got another intoxicated driver off the road. Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America. Thank you for watching.